A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. It doesn't get any better than this. I cannot believe how many compositions there are around here. Morning everybody, great to see you all again. So it is around about 7 a.m. and it's a beautiful morning in Torridon. You can see the stars in the sky, which is fantastic after yesterday's real wind and torrential rain. And as you can see there's hopefully you can see there's a little bit going on behind me. I'm here with the guys from Photo Speed and amazing photographers. Alex Nail and Paul Sanders and we are, believe it or not, taking a printer up a mountain to do what they call extreme printing. Now I don't really know why we're doing this but it should be fun and if I just show you over here they've got a stretcher. There's the printer. How heavy is this then? Uh, 25 kilos in total. <laughs> How far up the mountain do you think you'll get? 25 steps. <laughs> well. So one of the things that we've got to do when we get up there, or get halfway up there, is cross the stream. And there's been so much rain over the last few days. So that's going to be interesting. I think even without a stretcher, it will be difficult. I'm just looking over there and oh the light just looks so amazing on the mountain I'm hopeful that we can get a view through in probably the next sort of 15 minutes because just prior to the sunrise in that sort of dawn light just looks amazing it just creates this really beautiful glow on the snow on top of the hills I'm so pleased we've finally got snow there's nothing better than being out we saw that before the sunrise climbing a beautiful mountain like this. Fantastic. Oh wow. That is amazing. No, that's so stunning. So the plan is that we're going to stop. There's a little river here and there's these amazing Scots pine. So we're going to try and find a, a composition with these Scots pine in that you can see and then maybe down the valley of the river with these amazing mountains in the background. And I've just spotted some deer. There's definitely, a, there's a deer up there. Let's see if I can get it on camera. I'll do my Morton voice. Okay, I'll turn it around. I've got my wide angle lens, that's not good. Just up there on the ridge. Probably can't see them. What I'm gonna do Put my zoom lens on, see if I can pick them up. There they are. So I can see the deer now, just on the ridge there. Hopefully you can pick them out. Wow, that's incredible. See, it's so much to see that. So we got to um, what we're calling Printing Base Camp, which is, I'm in the middle of the river at the moment, as you can probably hear, um, and the stretcher with the printer has just arrived, over there. So I'm trying to get a composition, the, the, the light is just about to come and hit the mountains over there, hopefully, it looks fairly clear. So I'm trying to get a composition to just get this water at the foreground here, and then these trees and then the um, mountains in the background. So I've just come to the side here and actually I'm just going to take a shot. So I'm just going to move back and grab the shot. Oh. 
So what I'm doing here is I've got my camera as high as I can so that I can just make sure that the trees are not above the horizon. Now, ideally, I'd little, be a little bit to the left because I want the tree that's closest to me to sort of mimic the, the, the mountain behind, but that's quite difficult. So I think I've got the best of, 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 of both worlds, really, with where, where I am, with, the, with that tree being in the best spot, but still being able to see the mountain. I've got it on 24 millimeters on my 24 to 70 F10, focused on the mountain, no polarizer. It looks amazing. Okay, so I am now just going up here to try and get the light on this mountain up here. I'm hopeful that there's going to be some trees as well. And it gives the guys back there some room to do their photography of the stream. And get a bit of a bigger vista up here, I think. Wow. This is absolutely amazing. It really doesn't get any better than this. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so that was some fairly amazing light we just had there. And we've all been trying to find different compositions for, um, to print, because <laughs> we brought the printer up here, so we need to get some good shots. I've really been concentrating on getting wide angle shots, which is what I tend to do really. But um, I just spotted Alex with, with, with this tree here, and um, you know, he, he's gone a bit tighter on the scene. And I just thought it was interesting to, to think about the different um, sort of thought processes and methods that we've gone through. So, what, you know, can you just explain the composition and how you came up with it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different approach. I, I guess there's a lot of people who look for foregrounds as the foundation to yeah. uh, an image. Yeah. When you've got a scene like this sure. in particular, where you've got some focal points that you can hang the composition on already, yeah. then you're looking for that foreground to solve the problem. But when I'm looking at photographing mountains, I want to make them the star of the picture. Sure. And one of the problems with shooting at wide angles is it can really diminish yeah, exactly. the size and scale of the mountain, um, which sounds obvious, but it can actually have a really strong effect on the image. Yeah. And so I'm quite often looking to get the best of both worlds. And that's where those middle focal lengths can really yeah. work well, because actually, you know, we say that 50 millimeters is a boring focal length to yeah. use because it's, it's the way you see, but actually yeah. when you're trying to get that balance of, of scale and foreground interest yeah. um, in a mountain scene, then I think it, it works really well. Yeah, it's a good point actually in, in terms of trying to get that, 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 that scale because yeah, definitely in, in my images, they've got depth, but they haven't got, you, you probably can't tell just how vast these mountains are which yeah, you know right. and, and they're just sort of you know and, and really it's, amazing it's where you want to find that balance between perspective and scale or, yeah. or how much you want to flatten the image effectively yeah, yeah, because sure. as as you use those longer focal lengths as you know you start to lose that sense of perspective yeah and so there's always that that trade to make yeah um, and yeah people approach it in different ways which is yeah which is good really, yeah we couldn't have more different shots no 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 we've, 10 meters apart so. no it's, it's really interesting how you can get different shots so just just on this shot here you've got that you've chosen this tree as the the focal point yeah. I, I i presume and then how have you how have you decided where to stand here you know why 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 you know why you not stood here or here what's what's so one of the key things i want to do is isolate this tree against the, the sure. background uh, you can also see there's a little tree to the right. Yeah. So I'm positioning the camera so that I can see through to that tree and yeah. those on the left. So you do yeah. get that sense of depth yeah. just because we have got this singular tree that, yeah. that's closer to us. Sure. Um, yeah, so quite often my camera position is all about solving those little detail issues yeah, once yeah, sure. I've found my subject. Yeah, sure. Great, so that, that, was, that was really useful. So I think we need to go and print some images. Yeah. <laughs> Watching the 
Big hole there. So this is our camp where we have set up the printer and the laptop. We're gonna download our photos and print them. Now we can edit them a little bit and then and then it's gonna be great just to be able to print the image and then just hold it up against where we've just taken it. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. You can probably just hear the drone of the generator behind me but it's clouding over now we've had the best of the light so it's time for a coffee and do some printing hey <laughs> okay so as you can see conditions have got slightly worse now but we've erected a tent and the print's finally coming out, so um, it's looking pretty good. Slightly odd colour cast, but you know, we can sort that out later. <laughs> That'll be the red from the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously just the red filtering through from the tent. Um, but it's looking pretty good. So we finally got a print out, which was Amazing considering that the the printer got blocked and it started to throw it down with rain But my main advice would be from this particular trip is never ever 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 Try and print on a mountain really stupid idea But I'm actually really pleased with the print as you can probably see there's a slight color cast to it It seems that yellow didn't quite make it on the mountain, but all the other colors did and yeah, the, the, the water just comes in here, which makes it look really nice. The foreground just leads your eye around to these beautiful trees at the top. And then we've got the mountains that look absolutely fantastic in the distance. We've had a great time. It's been really good fun. And we're just going to take the printer back down now. But for, before we do that, we're just going to go and have a look at Alex's print from where he was talk, talk, taking his print earlier. And we can see what he's got because he had it when yellow made an appearance. Okay, I'm gonna get back across the stream without falling in, and then we'll go back up there. Okay, so we're back here a few hours later, having just completed our printing down the road. This print has come out really nicely. The really great thing about being able to print up here is that you do have this just immediate connection with the scene. I mean, it's actually quite enjoyable printing something on location, like I guess a painter would paint his uh, image out on location. Um, it's great being able to do that with photography. That's definitely novel. Um, it's not, totally impractical, but uh, getting the chance to do it is actually a lot of fun. I decided to come back out and just see what else I could get just before the light finished today because I really wanted to get something else and I've come to this really really remote location which is um, I'll, show, I'll show you on the on the map which is just just here and there's literally I don't think there's anybody around for miles and it, I just the solitude of this is just so spectacular I love it so, so much. As you can see, just behind me there, we're gonna get a really nice light show and <laughs> I nearly stayed inside. I nearly just wanted to just eat my cake and just chill. Wow, look at the light now. I'm gonna have to take a photo again in a minute, but I found this rock and this grass here that leads your eye down into the distance and the amazing mountains in this Torridon area. 
That's it, I feel really privileged to be here. Okay, I'm gonna go and take this photo. So I've got this rock, this is the center of attention. Sweeping there, amazing light. Nothing to go wrong here. Sometimes I just don't want to leave the mountain, especially when it's like this. I just, there's something about the just real harshness of this nature that I love so much. But I've got to, it's been a fairly busy week. I'm up here shooting and then I'm running a workshop in the Lake District. And I know so many people have asked about workshops and when, when I'm gonna put some more workshops on. But I've got some really good news. I managed to put two more workshops on my website. And before I go through those workshops, it's probably a really good time to talk about the sponsor of this video, and that's Squarespace. And they've made it, first of all, really easy for me to put these workshops on my site. And it's super simple to use. You don't have to understand any coding. I managed to put on these two workshops in about probably an hour, something like that. And most of it was just choosing the best photos to go, go with the, the, the workshops. So do check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, go to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So let me just tell you a little bit about these two workshops. Um, the first one is a two day Heather workshop. Um, and that is, on I think the 21st and 22nd of August, and the other one is a Sky workshop, and I've extended it for an extra day this year, which is on the 5th to 9th of November. And hopefully, um, you know, if you are interested, you can get one of the places. Thanks ever so much for watching, and until next Sunday, bye. <laughs>